All right, we're back. It's uh, Comp 1002, Web and Internet fund Fundamentals, and it's Week 8, Lesson 8, Part 1, uh, doing this broadcast on uh, Hangouts on Air. Um, in this Movember month, for those people who are doing the Movember thing, which I am, um, to, uh, you know, for men's health, uh, mental health, prostate and testicular cancer, all that kind of stuff that goes on uh, that affect one in eight men. So just, uh, you know, giving the public service announcement there once and for all. Um, so we're also doing, I asked you guys to download uh, on topic now, Visual Studio Code. And the reason why is because we're going to start using that today uh, for the rest of the semester, right? So let's start doing that. Um, I'll pull mine up so you can see what it looks like. Um, okay, and there's some files that I've got here. I'm going to kind of make a new folder and let's, I would try and do this with me on, uh, on the desktop so we learn a couple things. The folder of course is going to be called uh, comp1002 and then it'll be lesson 8. right? So that's what we're going to pick. So in order for us to use the folder like we normally do with brackets, we would, normally we drop brackets down here, the, the, the folder inside the sidebar, just drop, drop it on this side for Visual Studio Code. All right, so you've now got uh, VS Code plus, you know, you have access to the, um, to the folder here. And uh, so whatever you see here, just like we do in brackets, you see that there's nothing in here, and you also see that there's really nothing in here either. Uh, cool things that are, are part of VS Code that I like that I, uh, above over brackets is kind of some of these things on the left. Um, for example, some debugging tools that come with it. Also, uh, GitHub that's kind of bundled alongside, right? So you can kind of, once you create a Git repository, you have um, access to seeing that there's some changes that have gone on, and you can do a lot of the Git stuff right here in, in the in the tool, as opposed to doing it on command line. Things I don't like about it is it doesn't find paths very good. Um, for example, if you want to put a URL in for uh, you know for an image or something like that, um, it doesn't do that very nicely. Like like brackets, brackets actually you know gives you some code hinting around that. VS Code does not, and again, it's under it's a work in progress for Microsoft and, and Google, but it's it's a really good tool to use and learn um, as we get into more complex stuff um, throughout this course and other courses. So that's why I'm introducing it now. Um, and normally, like I said, I'd introduce this in another course, right? Because uh, we do more advanced stuff with it, but I think it's it's a good tool to know about uh, and be exposed to. Okay, uh, so let's talk about stuff to do here in our in our in our folder so let's just do some of that setup that we normally do so again I'm going to kind of create a new folder so you can see what happens uh, we're going to call this the assets folder uh, let's make some more uh, we're also going to make the content folder and I'm also uh, you know so those are the, the, the two and then we also have a scripts folder that I I've, we have kind of really not used yet um, but that's, those are the three that normally we, we kind of put together. And underneath the assets folder, I kind of put in some stuff here too, like images, lowercase, and maybe some audio, if we ever do some audio stuff, and maybe some fonts. These are just placeholder stuff, you know, uh, you know uh, things, uh, folders for you. But the idea is that once you see stuff on this side, then automatically it's here inside the sidebar. So um, stuff to know with, with VS Code is... If you notice, as I go down and I hover my mouse over the the, the uh, project, I have some options here for adding a file, adding a folder. I can do some refreshing. I can also collapse all the uh, the, the folders. So if I open up all these folders as an example, and I kind of go over here, I can collapse them, right? That's kind of stuff. I've got some search capabilities on the left hand side. If I want to search uh, my code, my project, I got my Git um, a workspace. I can initialize a Git repository right from here if I want to. And I've got some debugging uh, when it comes to things like understanding variables and all kinds of other stuff we'll get into maybe later on, if time permits. Okay, so uh, basic stuff that we normally do. Um, let's create a, fi a file for our HTML. So again, I'm going to kind of right-click here and go new file, right? And I'm going to call it index.html, just like we're normally used to. Um, and instead of starting with this with from scratch, what I want you to do today is let's go to some a new place called uh, uh, getbootstrap.com. Let's go to getbootstrap.com. Under get bootstrap, there's a getting started link where I want you to go, right? And if you scroll down under under uh, getbootstrap.com, there's going to be a little bit of a a starter. 
that I want to want you to get to. Like right here, it says basic template. I want you to grab this basic template, not because of Bootstrap. All right, whatever that was, not because of Bootstrap, but because of I get all the the stuff that I don't have to talk, like you know, kind of type in, right? So I'm gonna grab this whole thing right here, copy it. I'm gonna go back to Visual Studio and paste. So there's VS Code, right? I don't need all this Bootstrap stuff uh, because we're not gonna do Bootstrap. I just want I wanted you to go there for two reasons. One, um, to know that um, that's what I used on the exam. I used Bootstrap when we uh, we were doing the exam last day. We were together, right? Um, I just renamed the files, so you know it wasn't so apparent. But if you know Bootstrap, then you would have known that some of those things that I, I was doing with it was uh, was kind of built in. Um, just as a high level view of what Bootstrap is, it is a CSS a CSS framework front end. So if you're not great at CSS, it makes you into a superhero with a few lines of code. You can uh, uh, make your sites look pretty cool uh, without knowing much. But we're not going to do that today. So we're just going to get rid of this stuff on the bottom, the scripts. And we're going to get up, get rid of all these comments, right? And the uh, CSS piece here, right here, from Bootstrap, and just get, just come into the title. I just wanted to save myself typing all that stuff. And uh, let's get rid of even this this uh, little comment here. I'm going to bring this over here like this, so you can see it all. And again, it's just a starter that I want to use, right? And instead of Bootstrap 101 template, we're going to call it, of course, uh, Comp 1002. Uh, less than eight, right? So there's there it is, and I'll save that. Okay, cool. So I've got a couple of uh, um, you know a couple of things here. Um, we got one index.html file, and um, I want to create a um, <clears throat> in terminal. I want to go to terminal, right? And normally, what I do is through my my uh, my command prompt, I do all that Git stuff. And sometimes it's hard for us to find or, or swim to our, our folder, even if it's on the desktop. Well, here in VS Code, one thing I do like is click inside the sidebar on, on the bottom underneath your stuff. And if you notice, you get a little uh, context menu. You can say open in terminal if you're on the Mac or Linux or command prompt if you're on a Windows machine. And when you do that, a command prompt or terminal window will open up inside your folders. Right? So it'll actually point to your folder, which is kind of cool and convenient, right? as opposed to you swimming around and trying to find it. All right, so we want to do an, uh, a repository, a Git repository, here, like we normally do. So I'm going to say git init, which initializes the repository. As soon as I do that, if you notice on the left-hand side, uh, Visual Studio Code knows about it, right? And I, it so shows that I have one change that I made, right? Um, and then if I, I can say something like uh, git. I want to add uh, my uh, repository there. But before I do that on the left, let's go back to VS Code for a second. I want to uh, add a, a git ignore file. Right, so I'm gonna kind of go here, right click, uh, add a new file, which we're gonna call git ignore. And I'm gonna add some stuff that I wanna ignore, like for example on the Mac, uh, I wanna ignore anything that says DS store. Uh, for you guys, don't ignore anything for now, you're okay. But include the, the, the git ignore file for yourself anyway. Usually we ignore stuff we don't want to put up to git. Yes? The terminal, I, I was looking down when you Right click over here on the yep. sidebar and go to open in terminal. Oh, there you go. Okay. All right, so um, so back to terminal for a second. If you notice, so I've got these these different files here, a git ignore file as well. And now I'm gonna do uh, git add dot to add to my everything to the staging area. Because when we do a, a repository that's local, we have something called the staging area. Okay, I'm just gonna get into more of git uh, for a second so you understand how it works. Um, what I'm doing here is with git add dot, I'm adding everything to the staging area. I'm saying, hey, all this stuff that I've got going on right here, my uh, these files and folders, I want you to, uh, this is what I want to snapshot, right? And then I kind of add a comment, so git commit uh, minus m, and I'm going to say something like this, a message, which is going to be initial commit that we've seen before. Right, so here's initial commit. Okay, and then what I want to do uh, with this one is I want to link it to my repository online, which I don't have yet. So I'm going to make one. So I'm going to go to GitHub, and I'm going to go to uh, Georgian, and under Georgian, I want to add a new repository. Make sure it's under Georgian and not me this time, <coughs> and kind of put in a comp uh, one thousand and two uh, less than eight, right? 
And when I do that, I have this uh, git remote code here, which I want to add into my, to kind of connect my repository that's local to my remote repository. So I'm going to do that in my terminal. And then I'm going to put the next line, which is git push, this one. I'm going to say git push minus u origin master. And when I've done that for the first time, it pushes my local repository up into the remote. And if I refresh my, uh, my GitHub, you can see that it's there with a git ignore and an index.html. Let's do a pull. So I'm going to add a readme file. And when I add my readme file, I'm going to say uh, repo for comp 1002 web and internet fundamentals at Georgian College, right? If I can spell it properly. There we go. Oop. And I'll, I'll go down here and click commit new file. And when I do that, I have an extra commit up here, an extra snapshot, which I don't have locally. And I'm going to pull that back down. Um, so I'm going to go back to terminal and I'm going to say git pull, right? That's going to pull down the file. And when I go back to VS Code, you can see that I've got my readme file right in here, right? So all the same stuff that we saw in, in boot, uh, sorry, in uh, brackets we see here uh, pretty much with a few additional uh, changes, right? So here we are at index.html. Same kind of, of, of uh, code coloring that we're going to get, um, and most IDEs or little text editors like this have uh, the ability for you to get some code coloring like this, right? So you can see on the right, if you notice the bottom right, it gives you, um, you can select the language that you're targeting. Right now it automatically targeted HTML because of my, uh, my, my uh, a file ending index.html. It's selected HTML to code color. But if you notice, there's a bunch of other languages it supports, like for example, C sharp here and in, in, uh, in VS Code. It means you can do C sharp now uh, on a Mac or um, on a Linux machine, which you never could really before without a proper uh, editor. Um, CoffeeScript, Dockerfile, all kinds of other stuff that it supports. JavaScript for sure. Uh, JavaScript React, which is kind of a cool thing that it gives you some code hinting for React, um, if you know what that is. And there's other ones, and, the, and they, the main one for me is TypeScript, which is really, really cool, because TypeScript is, uh, is the language that we use to, uh, uh, to build new things, as well as Swift, which is also cool, too. If you want to build stuff for iOS uh, and stuff like that, it has different language support, similar to what Brackets does as well. Okay, so that kind of stuff. One thing we do need is some kind of uh, CSS file today because we're going to be working with, uh, again, we're really hitting, um, uh, you know, kind of a, advancing with CSS where we've talked about uh, some, you know, adding a, a, an external document uh, to our CSS to, to control our styles. Um, let me just get rid of this end if I'm not sure where I have that there. I forgot it. And um, what I also uh, what I also want to talk about today is the box model. So I'm going to kind of talk about... Um, we're going to start talking about text and formatting text a little bit more. I'm going to kind of run through that fairly quickly because we've already kind of touched upon it, but I want to kind of go over it and refresh it for you guys. How to how to do uh, you know modify text with uh, uh, with different um, uh, CSS, right? And then we're going to get right into the box model because the box model is really the kind of the meat and bones of what we do with CSS, right? So this is kind of an important class because um, although I'm accelerating it, the stuff we we're talking about today. Uh, it's, it's kind of slotted for next week, so I'm kind of pushing it up a little bit. So it gives us an extra week of working with JavaScript, which is what, really what I want to get into, right? Um, so if we can get it, I mean, it's kind of, this is an intro course, so it kind of tells you all the basics. And I think nowadays, if you don't know a little bit about JavaScript, you really don't know the basics, right? So that's why I'm kind of uh, pushing that on you guys a little bit. Okay, so let's add in a CSS file. And I know I want to add it here in my content. So I'm going to kind of right click here in my content folder and a new file, and I'm going to call this thing like main.css. Notice on the right-hand side here, uh, VS Code detects that it's a CSS file based on its extension, right? And I'm going to add in some basic CSS uh, comments here. So this is our uh, custom uh, CSS uh, file. That's what, it, that's what it is. Right? We can add some additional comments and stuff there as well. Comments in CSS, again, if I do a double slash like you normally see, and I put some stuff in here, that's not a comment in CSS. Comments in CSS have to be the, of the form, uh, you know, forward slash, star, star, forward slash, to surround comments, which is not like uh, how we see in, um, in other languages, right? So that's the one difference. Again, as a refresher, in index.html, we can have comments like that as well. We can say something like, this is our CSS section, and the comments we make in, in HTML, of course, use this format. So this is our CSS 
section, where we're going to put our CSS uh, links to our CSS files, right? So again, um, I can't do a drag and drop like in Visual Studio. I can do one of these, just drag and drop. I can't do that, right? Um, in in VS Code, uh, that's not something I can do. Um, I I can also um, if I go back to index.html. This is the one thing I don't like uh, about VS Code. If I start typing link, right? I want to link my stuff. Uh, I, I mean, it gives me this stuff, but normally in boot in in, uh, in brackets, right? That um, uh, what we normally have is if I start typing, like I want to go into, um, you know, an example is my scripts, uh, or sorry, my content menu. So I'm going to start typing content, and if I press uh, kind of forward slash here in brackets, it'll come up. It'll give me some code hinting. It doesn't do that here, right? So that's kind of a disadvantage for us, but that's okay. So we're going to say content main.css, which is where we want to go, right? And we've kind of linked our file, our main.css here, uh, to our file, right? I want to add some other um, details here like we've done before, right? I'm not going to put in a, in a, in a um, uh, any kind of navigation right now. All I'm going to put in is just our basic structure for our HTML. So again, I'm going to kind of put in a, you know, a header um, and yeah, I'll just go back here. Notice also that um, when you start typing, in, in, uh, in, in VS Code, it has uh, Emmet built in, so you don't have to kind of download and install a plugin or anything like that. So if I was to say something like my header with a class that's a dot, that's a, you know this is the code we use, a header with a dot, with a class of uh, let's say header. If I was just to do that, it just kind of puts the class in there for you, kind of puts it in, just like we normally would see. Now headers with a class of header doesn't make any sense, so we're just going to leave that as that. And I want to kind of outline things. So I want to have a header. I want to have a main, right? And I want to have footer. Here's here's our footer, right? And it kind of gives me the the kind of the uh, outlining of what we need. And let's put some comments in here where we, where we have a chance. So this is uh, you know, kind of our header. And this is our main content. Main content. And in here we have our footer. It's all the same stuff we normally would see. Um, in our header, obviously, I mean, we can put different things. Um, you know, kind of, uh, we can put a navigation and all that. We're going to leave it blank for now. We're going to get into that later. But in our main content, um, I want to kind of put in some additional things in here in our main content. Um, so maybe some kind of, um, you know, uh, H1 tag. Right, and inside my H1 tag, I want to say, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, welcome, something like you want to put in here. And then if I want to do a, a paragraph tag with some kind of lorem text, let's see if that works. And it does, of course, because I'm it's built in. Uh, you can see this lorem of uh, 50 that I put in there. Right, so I got a paragraph with some some placeholder text. And in my footer, I want to put that uh, stuff that I normally put in, which maybe is something like a H4 tag. Um, an h4 tag with uh, some kind of uh, and uh, and copy, which is a copyright, and with a copyright statement 2015, something like that. Okay, so pretty good stuff now that I've got going on. And you know what? The great thing is, uh, it's just regular HTML. So if I go back to my, uh, if I go back to my operating system, right? So if I go back up here, the one thing that um, that brackets has that VS Code does not have is live preview, right? So if I just double click on my index.html, my browser should be able to come up and interpret what I'm doing, right? It's not live code, but I can I can actually look at it. And it shows me my hello world. Here's my welcome, right? I've got my hello world. This h1 tag I got from. Um, this is from Bootstrap. Let's just get rid of that. I don't need that. But I want to do some some basic structure from my page, right? So remember what we talked about last time with our main CSS. Let's go back to our main CSS for a second. In our custom CSS, we want to talk about how our page is going to start looking, right? Because our main CSS, and we're focusing this this second half of the semester mostly on CSS and JavaScript, right? Um, 
it kind of colors our page. It kind of makes it so that we can add style to our page. So let's talk about some stuff I want to add to the body. If I, if I target the body element, right, then anything I put inside the body element is going gonna, is gonna to really attach itself to the body of my document. And it's going to be a default style. It's going to produce default styles for me for, let's say, fonts. Um, you can add, add, add some kind of background and so on. Uh, let's add that in. So I'm going to say, I want to kind of select a font family, right? Um, and I want to probably make it some kind of Arial or Helvetica. So if I start typing Helvetica, uh, you can see that it comes with, with uh, some code hinting there, right? Arial Helvetica sans serif. Um, that's the first thing. Um, my, my default font size, right, uh, is really 16 pixels. That's the normal size. And remember, we talked about different sizes being, we can use uh, absolute sizing, like with pixels. We can use also something called M's, right? M's is a different kind of way of doing it, where we actually look at uh, the size of a standard M, right? Well, we have to define that standard here, right? We have to kind of say, what's our standard size? Is it 16 pixels? Is it not? What is it? Um, I can do that by basically saying something like font size. And I can also, you know, there's, there's some uh, stuff that I inherit, right? So I could say something like, well, you know, I want my, my fonts, my default font size to be slightly larger. Uh, than uh, the normal. I want to make it 1.1 M here in my body, right? Which is 10% larger than a regular M, right? 1.1 M. I also want to make uh, my line height. We're going to talk about that again. And line height is like leading, right? That's what it is, right? Leading. And uh, line height is the, the spacing between lines, let's say, or how big the line, the whole line of, of text takes. So how much space it takes, right? I'm trying to, you know, give it to you in a a very straightforward way. So you've got your text, and then how much kind of you know you've got a kind of a um, you know space before and space after the text, and that kind of together makes the line height altogether. So let's make that a 1.2 m's, so slightly larger than our line. See what the effect this has, right, uh, on our on our text. And if I go back to my uh, my site here and refresh. Right, you can see that I get some changes to the way things look. Right, my welcome changes to Arial, right, which is I've, I've swapped my font families to Arial Helvetica. I'm using, by the way, please download and install Visual Studio Code, right, if you came in late. Um, and it looks like my, you know, my line height uh, is pretty good. If I want to make it larger, you want to see a bit a, more of a difference in this. Let's just go back to VS Code for a second. And let's change our line height here uh, to uh, 1.4 m's to see what the difference is. Let's change this 1.4 and save. And then I'm going to go here and refresh. Now watch, from here to here, right? See how it spaces out a little bit more? So it's a little bit more spaced out. So it adds a little bit more spacing. And line height, what it does is when we have a little bit more spacing between our lines, especially on the web, um, text copy, if you will, we call, you know, content, becomes a little bit more readable. Right, we can read the copy a little bit better, right? The text on, on the screen. When it's tighter, right? So if I was to go back to back back to this and change this to something smaller, like let's say I don't want to go one m, I want to go 0.9 m. You can do that too, right? Smaller than normal, right? Um, and if I refresh, I'll take a look at this, and now if I if I tighten it up, it looks like this, right? So that's not cool. So line height really gives us the ability to move our lines. How many lines are in between my lines? Is it you know do I want to space you know uh, uh, space of one, do I want a space of 1.1, do I want a space of two, right? So what, if I want to double space then, right? If I want to double space, then I would change this 0.9 uh, to two, right? So two M's. And if I go back here for line height and I refresh, you can see that it's double space now, right? So again, lots of control in terms of the way we're displaying our content as opposed to, um, you know, uh, as opposed to how it was before, right? So double spacing. Question so far? Right? I'm, I'm hitting my body tag, right? My body tag here is affecting everything on the body, right? The body of the document. That's including all containers that are inside the body tag. And if you remember how it was from a hierarchy perspective, right? And if you look at each thing as, you know, nested containers, a bunch of nested containers, that's what our, 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 our document would look like, our web document, right? The outer container, if you think about it, is HTML, right? And then underneath that, you have two other containers, right? Just like inside of our code. Let's take a look, right? Outer container is, is HTML. Here it is. This is the outer container, right? And then the inner container here, there's one for head, which is really our control structure for our page, right? And then there's the body co uh, container. And the body container contains everything else, right? It contains our header, it contains our main, it contains our footer, right? 
So that's why you have to look at it. So containers within containers, almost like a box within a box, right? And that's why when we talk about the box model, which we're going to be talking about today, I want you to think about everything as containers within other containers. And that's how we really do it. And from a control perspective, we target that, that, that container item, whatever it is, <coughs> with, a, with a specific style, right? I want you to go one step further. If I put an H1 element, here's the H1 element that contains the actual tag itself plus the text, the, you know, the, the inner HTML here, right? These two, uh, these two things, the, you know, this is a container, right? So we've got our main container, you've got an H1 container, inside there you have a text element, right? That's all inside there. They're all containers. Our paragraph is a container, right? A container that contains our, our content, right? The, the actual uh, text that's inside the container, right? Why am I saying this? Because when we target, when we start targeting CSS, the biggest confusion for students when we first learn basics about CSS is, I don't get it. I don't know how I target the elements because what am I targeting? You're targeting the container. Anything inside the container is going to be affected by your styles, right? So again, you have a selector. Here's my selector, body, right? And here are all my declarations, as a recap, to my selector inside the code, the code block. This is my code block from the, this left curly brace to the right curly brace. My code block's in here. This code block, all these little things here, all these declarations that are, that are going to be read in a row, in order, right, are, being effect, are affecting this selector, right, targeting the body tag. Okay, just to recap. So I don't want to make it two. I think two is a little bit too much. Let's go back to 1.2 just to make it comfortable, but uh, uh, nothing more than that. Okay, cool. Now I want to affect... Um, I want to start affecting all of my, uh, I want to start some, some basics, right? I want to start targeting some speci specific styles for my, um, uh, my headline tags or uh, heading tags, right? So there's a ways I can do that, right? For example, I want all my um, heading tags to have a different font, right? Every one of them, right? So how would I do that? Well, I can remember from a selector perspective, I can separate, uh, I can I apply the same styles to multiple selectors, right, by using the comma comma separated list, right? So let's just do that. So say what head h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, h6. All of my heading tags are going to be affected by this code block now, right? By the way, you see how it's underlining it in um, this green. It says do not use empty rule sets. I don't want to have an empty rule set like this. It's kind of giving us some code hints saying, hey, don't leave this empty because your, your file is still going to read it, right? Um, so, okay, so, so I need to put something in there, and I want to change my font family. So I'm going to say font family, right? Um, and instead of Arial, let's use something else, right? Uh, any suggestions? <laughs> the floor, instead of me talking. Yes. Times, sure, let's do this. So I'll say I'll start putting times in there. You can see it's times. There's a few different ones, right? Times New Roman, Times Serif, uh, you know, Cambria, or Times New Roman with Times Serif. Let's just use this Georgia Times New Romans uh, one right here. I like that one. All right, so there's that one. Let's end it off with a semicolon. Remember, all our declarations, our code, is, uh, ends with a semicolon, right? And then uh, let's talk about our... Uh, we don't want to talk about our font size too much because each one of our... Um, H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, each one of those comes with its own built-in styles from the browser for now, right? We're going to leave the browser styles in place. I just want to change up the... Um, you know, the, the headline tag. So can we, let's see, see what it looks like when I refresh. You can see now that I've got welcome. It's uh, a different font family for the rest of, for each of my headings. And if I, if I had other headings in here, by going back to my index.html, I've got my he heading one. And let's add another heading down here. So we'll do another heading two. So heads two with, uh, you know, more about <clears throat> this topic whatever topic is going to be, with some kind of paragraph tag uh, with a lorem of 100 this time, right? some more text. And if I go back here, and you can notice that um, even this tag, so this is our heading 1, this is our heading 2, and if you see that between the two, uh, between the two heading tags, um, you know, there's a different kind of, a diff different font size. You also see that there's a different line spacing. Notice that each heading tag comes with, by default, because of the browser styles, it comes with this additional space between the heading and, so, and the paragraph. So here's our paragraph, and here's our heading, and you see there's a space between those two things. That's default space. Tom, yeah. if you've got a multi-page website, 
the, the CSS code where you're lumping all your your headers together or your heads, that's not a wise idea, is it? Because then you, you can't control the independent um, sizing. So for, say, for example, each page? Like, well, no, for H1, H2, H3. Yeah. At least if you go, you break it down so that you've got one, one section for H1, one section for H2, you can control and manipulate just that one targeted area. Absolutely, yeah. So but, is, is which way is better? Well, um, what I'm doing here makes sense, and I'll tell you why. So if I go do this, where I'm targeting, I want all of my H1, all my header tags to have a different font family. That makes sense. They're all sharing the same rule set, right? Yeah. But it doesn't make sense, like you said, to kind of put in uh, all the H, you know, the, the heading tags with, um, or the elements that I'm targeting with the same font size, because heading tags should all be different. So this is where I would break it off down here, and I can do it again. So I would do it twice, and I'll show you why. So let's say if I want to say that um, I know that my uh, headline one, what's the default size? Anyone know what the default size is for uh, an H1 tag? Wow. Okay. So, I mean, again, you have to kind of think about what's the size. What, what it does, go, if, if our default font size is 16 pixels, right? Um, that's for our regular text. We've got to make it so it's fairly big, right? So... If, if you want to look at it, again, I'm going to go back to W3Schools, or as our API documentation tells us, right? And if I put in, if I go here and put in H1, right, in the search, <laughs> so kind of put in, you know, kind of H1. Come on, Tom. Somewhere in here. You know, this is the one thing that has been bizarre for me. H1. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just do it here. That's really weird. H1. So it talks about H1 to H6, and uh, it you know if you go through here and look, um, it should talk about uh, the attributes, the events, and the CSS settings. Uh, notice how uh, an example. This is how you would do an example of, of targeting just the H1 tag, right? This is a good example, right? Font size is 2M, right? Um, that they're, they're, they're suggesting 2M, and we're talking about, we'll talk about margin top and, and all this kind of stuff later, today, actually. And here's uh, H2, they're saying it's 1.5 and so on. Um, I can take a lot of these, these different examples, if we want to, and we can include them in our page. Let's, let's try and do that. So let's, I'm going to go here to W3Schools, and I'm going to take my H1 tag, and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to go back here and kind of paste it in here so we can see what that does, right? So there's our a couple things. I don't need my, let's take out uh, margin, uh, top, bottom, all this kind of stuff for now, right? So I'm going to put this back in a second, okay? But we'll talk about what that is. So if I was to target my H1 tag, right, and not talk about margins, where, do the mar where does the margin information come from right now? Yes, the default browser styles. If I don't, if I don't manipulate the default browser styles, I still get that default browser style uh, you know, affecting my, my tags, okay? So if I just do this, right, what is this saying? Basically, it says display block font size 2M, so twice the size of a regular thing, which is, means it's 32 pixels by default, right? But it's not 32 pixels because I've made my body tag 1.1M, right? So it's going to be based on slightly larger uh, sizes. Um, okay, and there's, here's my font weight bold. Right? Font weight bold means I'm making the, the font bold for, all my, for my H1 tag, which is... Which is what we normally do. We, already, we don't have to actually put this in right now because it's part of our browser styles, right? But this is, this is okay. We'll talk about display block in a second, what that is. Uh, but let's take this out as well. So this, all we really need now is this font size 2Ms, right? Which is kind of the size of our font. Uh, so there's uh, some com compiled styles here. There's, there's some stuff that are cascading. This is part of the cascading style sheet I idea, right? The first piece of our style is affecting all of our H, uh, H tags with our font family of Georgia times, right? Times New Roman. But and then our, we've, we've stated simply that our H1 tag is 2M, right? Let's continue with that uh, idea. We'll make our H2 tag uh, font size. I saw that it was 1.5M. Again, being 1.5 uh, 1.5 times the size of a regular font, which is 16 pixels, and if you say half of eight is four, right? This four and 16 is 20 pixels. So, or, or this this should be you know 1.5, right? Did I calculate that right? 16. Yeah. Um, 
Maybe not. <laughs> I meant I meant it's actually eight and eight and sixteen, which is twenty-four. Okay, so that's really what it is, twenty-four pixels, right? And if I go back to W three schools for a second, it gives us some examples of the standard sizes right here, like one point one seven M. I like that one for H or H three. Let's keep that one, right? And I'm gonna just take the sizes so that we, we can match up what we have here. H three, right? And let's go to H four. We're just rewriting all the basic browser styles here. But the good thing is, like uh, Keith, like what you're saying, is I can be very specific on a. Um, this is really interesting. Our H four one point three three, but our font size for for uh, is, is slightly larger. That doesn't make any sense. Probably the other way around. One point one seven. So slightly different sizes for H4 size, uh, H4 font, right? And by the way, this is by no means accurate. Look, here's our uh, 0.83. Oh, did I take the wrong thing? Yeah. And there we go. Here's our H5. So it's probably going to be like even smaller than that. But it doesn't matter. We can we can kind of specify whatever we want here. H5. And let's just put this, instead of margin top, we'll use font size, which is what it should be. All right. And as you can see, it goes smaller and smaller as we go. Uh, we increase the, we change the, the heading size, right, font size. And let's go 0 0.5. Okay, again, all we're doing is we're specifying the font sizes, right? So we're... 2 is twice the size of regular font, so it's 32 pixels, and we're moving on down. Let's see, see what the, that effect, what effect it has on our page, right? So if I go back to our, our page and refresh, right, it does make our copyright a little bit bigger because it's bigger than what the normal styles that we get from our browser is for our, um, our H, uh, H4 tags. I made this an H4 tag, right? Notice again how all of the, uh, each of these tags is different. Now, what about if you're, if Keith, you're talking about if I want to specify uh, a heading on a specific page, I want to target that. What, 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 what way could I do that? If I only want to target one heading on a specific page, what's the right way to do it? So not all headings, but only just one heading on a specific page. I would probably try a, a dot H4. Okay, so you're talking about uh, no, what I'm saying is, if I want to target the style, the size of my, of a heading on a specific page, how would I, how would I target that? Let's go to uh, Kayla. Kayla, what do you, what do you think? I could put an ID, but you know what? IDs are kind of frowned upon, eh, for that kind of uh, thing. Believe it or not. Um, what's the other way to do it? Class. And you know why? Even though it's one tag, and you might like say, but it's only one tag, Tom. And you said we can apply a single ID to a, to a, to target uh, our our styles. The answer is yes, you could, but modern way of doing CSS says we shouldn't do it, right? We shouldn't use an, uh, an ID to do it unless we absolutely have to. What we should do it rather instead is use classes that we can reuse over and over again. And we have to also think about this. Is there uh, ever an opportunity for us to apply that same class again across our website? And maybe there is, right? So if that's true, then we would rather use a class uh, from the get-go. IDs, what we want to use IDs for is for anchor tags. So we can uh, we can rush to that particular section by clicking a link. That's what we. What's a good reason to use IDs? We want to try and avoid using IDs for uh, for styles. Although it's totally possible, you could totally do it. You could totally do target like H1 tags or all H1 tags, like I'm doing right here with our styles. Right? Uh, it's just uh, we're trying to do best practices here as well. But you're right. It's not like it's, it's not like your answer is wrong, Kayla. It's yeah. just that it's just that it's we're trying to talk about best practices. Okay. Okay. So again, so this is the way we're 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 targeting our page, and we're talking about these um, the way we can modify our page. Now, if you notice how long this is, this is quite long, right? Like it looks like um, each of our 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 you know our styles. I mean, we're affecting each of our H1 tags, and you're like, holy crap! Like, do we really have to do this? And the answer is, yeah, you do, right? Like this is how this is how, when we create a, a CSS a page uh, like this, we really. Uh, it's our manifest, if you will, for our format, our styles, for the entire uh, website. Now, you can break this out into several pages if it gets really hairy and long, right? Like, for example, um, you know, it's got to be something that's readable to you. And sometimes what people do is they say, well, here's all of our styles and with no comment for our, our heading styles. So this is like an example. I can say something like heading styles. 
right? And the reason why we want to do this is kind of to say, well, this is all the stuff in our headings. These are all our heading styles, right? And this is kind of stuff that's all, this is the whole body, right? So body styles. And we might have more other, other, other body styles in here as well that are separate. Body styles, heading styles, and so on. And then um, when we go down a little bit more, uh, we can break out our, uh, the presentation of our CSS file uh, just like that. Now, I like to start at the top. So I always try and sit there and say, I want to start with my body first, and then go down and hit my headings, right? If I want to do that, what's next? Paragraphs, right? So let's, let's hit our paragraph style. So we'll say P, all general paragraphs have this style. That's what I'm saying. And let's say I want my, uh, for all paragraphs, I've got, um, you know, I want my font size, instead of being uh, a regular 1.1, right? My paragraph styles, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I've got, uh, sorry, I've got a general um, line height of 1.2, right? But let's say for our paragraphs, I want a general line height of 1.3, right? Let's just add that in. So line height, so only for paragraphs, line height uh, 1.3 amps, but not for anything else, not for links, not for navigation, not for other areas, just for paragraphs, right? If I go back to here, you're going to see it space out just a little bit more, right? There it is, um, a little bit more than we normally would see. So you can do that. We're going to be very specific here, and it's a cascade, right? So there, there we have it in terms of our, our basic uh, stuff that we're doing with our with our tags. Anyone else have questions around what I'm doing here? Okay. All I'm doing is a is kind of a cascade of styles in order. And here's all our paragraph styles, paragraph uh, styles. Right? We can add more in here. How about if I actually do this correctly and not wrong like I've been doing it? Okay. So that is kind of a, uh, in a nutshell, what we've been taking care of. If you're, um, I want to update GitHub, right? Because I'm, I'm doing some stuff. And instead of going to the command line, I want to do it through VS Code. Because remember, we're using VS Code here. And again, for people who have come in late, please download VS Code. We're using Visual Studio Code today instead of brackets. So if I click on, um, on this little Git link on the left, notice there's a number two there, right? A little uh, badge that says two. If I click on this, it says, it shows me two files here. It shows me my index.html with an M next to it. And if I hover over, it says modified, right? And this one here, right, is my main.css. And if I hover over that, it says untracked. Untracked means that I haven't added it to my, uh, my files. And I can add it by clicking the plus button. Let's do this here in, in, the, in the editor as opposed to the command line. So add this in. This one's staged now. And if you see, the, it becomes an A, which means added. And I want to kind of made my, make my changes to my index. I want to add that in there too, right? So I've added that change as well. So I've got the, both those changes in there. If you notice, my changes are zero, but I've got two that are staged. They're ready to commit. I need a commit message, however. So this is where I've, uh, you know, I'll say I added um, main.css. That's what I really have done here. And I want to add this commit message to my repository, and I can do that by clicking the checkbox or this check up here. Okay, now that's added to my repository, that's pretty cool, right? It's there, but I really don't have, I really haven't um, uploaded it to GitHub, and I can do that by clicking this ellipsis right here and go uh, push. So it kind of connects to GitHub, and then it pushes it up there, and if I look to see what it looks like on GitHub now, right, for our files, you can see that it has all the latest changes, right? So I've done that all through the, through the, through the tool, so it's kind of combining one thing. You can use your uh, VS Code uh, to do some of your GitHub stuff alongside with, but you know, doing it by hand if you want to uh, through your terminal, right, or command prompt. Again, so some cool features for me when I when I use Visual Studio Code, some stuff I like. There's things I don't like, and and by the way, there's things I don't like about every single ID that's out there, and I always wonder how come we can't have this piece of this tooling and this ID, you know. Like I used, to, I used to use Dreamweaver when I was when I first started out uh, doing stuff, and uh, I like there's a lot of stuff I liked about it, and there's things I didn't like about it, right? I was like, why can't Dreamweaver do the same stuff that Visual Studio does, right? Well, because they're, they they do they take different approaches to the same problem. Same thing with VS Code. VS Code takes a different approach than brackets. Eventually, they're going to have very similar functionality, though. Okay, let's get back into this. So again, I've got some um, stuff here, and I'm going to go back into my file order. This is the files. 
And let's say I, wanna, I don't want to have this sidebar, I don't want to see the sidebar, so I want to kind of collapse it. And I've been playing around a lot with this main.css, but I also want to make changes to my HTML. And I want to see both things on the screen at the same time, right? How do I do that? So I'm kind of maximizing my screen here so you guys can see it all. Uh, on the right, there's this like symbol for split screen. I'm going to click that. And now I have two things up. I have my CSS and my CSS, right? Well, this is cool, but really not useful. I want to have my CSS here and my index.html here. So I'm going to click in this area. I'm going to go back to my sidebar, and I want to click on my index.html, and now I have both. Right? So I have my index.html on one side and my CSS on the other side. Another really cool feature that I like. All right, so I can see some stuff here, and if I want to try and you know, see the effect, I want to kind of use my add more, more content here, and I can add, uh, you know, I can see my CSS here as I'm coding, right? which is kind of cool. Here's my structure, here's my style. Questions so far in Visual Studio Code and uh, on what we're doing here with our styles when, it, when we're hitting our, our text. Again, recap, selector, right? We also have this piece, which is our, our uh, code block, right? And we have these, which are our declarations, right? I'm, just ref I'm refreshing because people have been away for a week. Maybe they forgot, right, all the stuff we've been talking about before, right? Okay, and on the right-hand side, you've got your structure, you've got your meta tags, they do certain things. They control the, um, the way our page is viewed um, in terms of our, um, it controls our page, it adds things to our page, like for example, we just added our, uh, a link to our CSS, uh, you know, our style sheet, and so on, and plus it has the, the structure for our content. That's what really HTML is all about. We mark up our content with tags, we, we put our content inside, inside of containers, that's what we're doing, and then we target the container with our styles, our style sheet, right? So any questions around this stuff before I continue? Very basics, right? You might say, hey, Tom, we've done this before. Yes, we have. But some people still, when I, when I looked at some of your exams, by the way, I was looking at them, most, for the most part, you guys were good. Some of them, though, that I was like, oh, how do they, how do they miss this piece? Like, it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, <coughs> So, you know, it, I mean, it happens. It happens where we, you know, not all of us understand the same stuff. So I like to try and review and, and go over stuff over and again. Okay, let's get into that PowerPoint stuff because I got some PowerPoints to show you guys today. And um, just to make sure we, we kind of hit all the highlights um, of the PowerPoint. And again, this is for your reading. It's kind of a, an outline of what we got from the book, right? So we're going to hit number one, part one. There's two parts. Um, you know, and I think it's chapter 9 and 10 that we're targeting today. Chapter 9 and 10. Chapter 9 in the book is uh, part 1, and chapter 10 is part 2. And chapter 10 is probably like the most important chapter probably in the CSS side, right? Uh, I would say more than anything else. Let's go into chapter 1, or chapter 9. And this one is really showing off, well, that's really big, um, you know, formatting uh, text with styles. This is what's really what we've been doing so far this morning, right? Um, and we've talked about our font family. Uh, we can specify alternate fonts if we want to, like we have in our font family. So if you notice here, um, in our font family, we have Arial, Helvetica, Sans Serif, because if a system doesn't have Arial, then it, then it goes to Helvetica. If it doesn't have Helvetica, it, it just does a, a generic Sans Serif font, right? So it can, it can affect uh, multiple browsers. Now, most people, for, for the, they have Arial on their system, most people. But just in case, there might be some places in the world uh, where you use a browser that doesn't have that, um, and that's why we specify. Same thing with Georgia. Here's a better example. Georgia, not everyone has Georgia, um, but we want, if we want to use Times New Roman, that's going to come from the operating system. That's why it's in, in quotations like this. And of course, worst case, you can use a, ta a Times, and even worse than that, you can use a serif type font, right? Because that's a font with serifs, a generic font, right? That it, would, that it would render on the screen, okay? So that's really what we're talking about when we say alternate fonts. Italics and, and bold uh, formatting, I mean, uh, so how would I do, if I was going to go down here uh, to show you the, you know, the, the different ways. Of, so we talked about font family for a second uh, really quickly. And I want to do, um, let me just skip down here. So here's italics, and I want to kind of specify italics. There's, there's a couple ways to do that in, in the browsers, and it says, by default, browsers italicize a site, M, and E and our uh, I tags. Now, I haven't talked about I tags because they're kind of deprecated. I don't recommend you use them at all. So don't please don't use I tags. Uh, I tags are used for something else these days, right? 
So I recommend not to use those. But for example, if we want to change italics, we can always put font style, and then we can we can change from uh, font style from a normal, which is the default, to italic or oblique. And it's, there's some slight differences between italic and oblique. Let's take a look at those things. So um, let's say I want uh, I want to target. And this is interesting. I want to target my paragraph, right? But I want to target, you know, uh, some of the words in my paragraph, as an example. How do I do that? Is there a way that you can think of that I want to target the first, the first words or the first word of our paragraph? Is there a way of doing that uh, in a very simple way that you can think of? There's some complex ways to do it too, by the way. But I want to target the first word. Anybody? So there's a couple ways. I could program something in like this. I can go into my paragraph and kind of surround this lorem with uh, some kind of um, uh, some kind of tag. What kind of tag would I use around a uh, inside of a body, right? So there's two there's two generic tags I can use. There's a div tag and uh, what's the other tag that I can use for a generic tag? Anybody remember? What was one? No, <laughs> please don't use style tags. Uh, I like your thinking though, but that's not that's not the one we want to use. What's another one? So generic tags. I want to target. I'm not targeting. It's not a generic container that targets uh, uh, you know other other containers, but rather only words. Let's say I want to target a word or a selection of words. What can I use? There's another tag. Who remembers? Remember? Span, right? So if I go span, if I go span, right, and I want to put the span around my lorem, the first word, I can do this this way, right? So span, right? And I can do the same thing uh, around my lorem tag over here. I'm just going to copy and paste. So I can say, let's say I've, I've targeted the first word with a span, right? And I want to make this, just for our, our, um, our context, I want to say that this first word, I want to give it a class, my span tag, I want to give it a class of uh, first word, first word, right? So that's what I'm doing here. So my span is first word. Right, and I'm putting that inside my paragraph tag. Take a look at what I'm doing here, right? So, so it's first word. So I can do a couple ways. I can target this first word, lorem. I can target it by saying, um, I want to target any span. That's kind of really generic. It means every span in my document is going to have the same style, which I don't want. Um, it doesn't make any sense. Or I can apply a class to the span to apply to all first words, all, all, anywhere that I have a class of first word in there, right? So let's go down here, and then now we're going to start targeting, um, you know, some generic classes. So the first thing I'm going to start putting is a dot for the class. That's how we, we specify a class, right? And then we say we have to we have to call it the same thing. Luckily, we have the split screen going on, so I can do one of these: copy, paste, right? First word. So we're targeting that, and I'm kind of putting in the the same kind of bracket. So this is now this is my selector. I'm selecting the class, any any item. This is how we read it. Any uh, container or tag that has a class of first word, I want to apply these styles to it. Okay, and I want to italicize. So I want to say uh, font dash style, font dash style. I want this first word, uh, you know, to have italics, right? So I start typing italic. Okay. Are you with me? All right, so I've got these, these two things here, and if I want to go back and check my HTML for a second um, and refresh, I can see now that my font style is italic, right, on just the first word of the paragraph, right? So I want to target that one word, right? And I did it with a span tag, right? There's different ways of doing this, by the way. Okay, how about, going back to this, not just italic, but I want to add bold to it. Can I do italic and bold? Of course I can. I can say, you know, font dash weight, right? Font weight bold. So I want italic and bold. My first word is italic and bold. Um, let's try this out and go back to our, our our styles here and then try it out. So we see our italic and bold, right? Okay, I want it italic and bold and blue. I want my, my color to be blue, right, for this particular uh, thing here, right? So let's go back. So I want to change my color. And if I start typing blue, I can do that as there's a generic color of blue that I, it'll accept, right? And actually, Visual Studio Code gives us a little bit of a color guide, right? Where if I don't like blue, 
right? Um, I mean, I can see the default. This is almost like a preview of what the blue is going to look like. Like, this is generic blue, right? All right, so I've kind of added blue in there. And if I go back and refresh, I got, oh, did I have save? I didn't save. Uh, I go back and refresh, and I've got blue, right, for my first word, right? So I can be very specific, right, uh, in terms of, of the way I do things with span tag. Um, keep in mind, span tags are generic tags. They have no semantic meaning. There's no meaning to them whatsoever. We use them primarily to target areas where we want to apply specific styles to them without using the style keyword. We don't want to do inline styles at all. We want to use generic style. We want to use uh, styles that are in our, in our style sheet, right? But we want to specifically target areas in our, in our document with a span tag, right? As a refresher. Okay, cool. So we've got our, 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 our style being targeted here. And now the other thing that I want to try and do is I want to show you what it looks like when we use our default, uh, the stuff that comes with our default browser style. Right? So I'm going to go back. And instead of using a span of first word, for the next one, let's say, let's kind of go down to the last word of the, of the paragraph where it says, uh, in this case, it looks like nihil, right? which means nothing in some languages. Um, let's target this with a, with an emphasis. So I'm going to say em. So we'll say uh, an m tag, right? Emphasis. This is our default browser style, and I'll close it off with a slash em. Same thing with the last word of this one, Dolores, right? Which is em, and then backslash em, right? Four slash em. Um, so that's. We're using our default browser styles for the M tags, right? Emphasis tags. See that? Let's see what effect it has in our um, on our page. So here's our page, and if I refresh, then I get the same kind of italics happening on our on our um, you know our tag. And this is based on our default browser styles. We haven't reset our browser styles. We're using our default browser styles to target a portion of our page, right? And what if I want to make this not only emphasis, but I also want to make it bold? How do I do that without using any kind of additional CSS and using our default browser styles? Any idea? Strong. strong. How do I put strong and emphasis together around our last, uh, you know, tag here? What do I do? Just put. I can put it beside it, but I, w I really want to kind of encapsulate it, right? So there's M. Think about M as a a container, right? I've put the. I have my parent container. For this one, what's my parent container of the M? It's the paragraph. I want you to always think about parent and child relationships as we go forward, okay? So I'm going to ask you some questions. So my parent tag of the M is the, the P tag, right? We have a sibling. What's our closest sibling to our, uh, to our um, M tag? Span. That's our closest sibling. Our child. So sibling means brother, sister, right? So our brother, the brother that's underneath the same parent, or, or sister, we call sibling, right? The sibling tag is a span because the span tag is also a child of the parent tag, uh, the, of the p tag, right? So here's here's our m and our span. These are both children of the parent of the p tag. The p tag is also a child, right? So what what is the parent of the of the p tag in this context? The main, right? And it has some brothers and sisters too. What are some brothers and sisters of the of the uh, or the siblings of the p tag here in this context? I have a heading. We have a heading two. We have another p tag. These are all uh, sibling tags of the p tag, right? They're all on the same level, right? You know, um, the parent tag here is the main, right? What's the parent of the main? Body, right? The parent of the main is the body. What's the parent of the body? HTML, right? That's the parent of the, H, the, the body, right? So that's how it goes. There's a, a parent-child hierarchy inside of our document. And I always want you to think about that. It, and it kind of cascades that way. Because sometimes what we have is I want to affect an entire uh, container area. Uh, for example, I want to I want, if I want to affect everything that's in main, OK? That's kind of a weird thing to do. But let's just say I wanted to do that. I would do that, let's say, here. So these are our main styles. So styles that target main, let's say, right? And I want to put in the main tag. That's kind of weird to do, but let's just say I do that. And I want to put a background color in there. So I want to say all, everything inside my document pretty much has got a background color, right? Uh, some kind of gray. I'm just going to put gray, right? 
I can color it gray. And let's see how that looks now, right? So my entire document should be like that, yeah? Okay, let's go back in here and take a look, see what, what effect that has on our document when I refresh, right? Hey, how come my entire document, oh wait, it's just the main tag. And here's something that happened, look, our, our welcome is peeking out of our main tag, how come? Why is that happening, right? It's still a parent. The parent is the main, and we've got our H1 that's inside main, but it's peeking out. Here's the top of this welcome. Look at the welcome. It's actually, there's a bit of stuff where it's peeking out of here. How come? Right? Because we haven't controlled it. That's why. In order for us to get this to look right, and this is pretty much of a dark gray, I wonder if I can go with a light gray. If I kind of go in here and say, instead of gray, let's see if I have a light gray. Light gray. I do. Right? There's a lighter gray. And by the way, it gives you the code too, right? D3, D3, D3 is, a, is the code that you can use for light gray, right? Which is kind of cool here. And then if I kind of refresh that, let's go back. So it's a little bit nicer on the eyes, still kind of weird. But let's just look at it. And if you notice that we have our welcome kind of peeking out because it's so big, right? We're going to fix that later on. But it doesn't affect our copyright tag because copyright is inside of an H, sorry, an H4 uh, element that's also inside of a, of a footer tag. Right? A footer element, right? So it's not covering these things. So it's not our entire body, just our, our heading. And I also have some, some spacing on the left hand side, which is kind of, it, it comes from our, it looks like, I, I'm going to call it spacing for now. We're going to rename it later on today, right? Uh, some spacing on the left and the right, and some spacing on the top and the bottom, right? And, um, and this, is all, this all comes from our default browser styles, right? That we get this margin, is what it's really called, right? Let's go back. So that's how I target my entire main, and I, I want to apply a background color. Um, so I've got this, going back to what I was asking, we kind of di digress a little bit. I said I want to put a, a bold around uh, the, the last word, and in addition to the, to the emphasis. Well, there's two ways to do it. You can put it inside the emphasis tag as a child, or you can make it the parent. Right? So if I was to do that, I can say, do something like this. I can say strong, right? and then inside that I can put emphasis as well. It's kind of a weird thing to do, but let's just do it, just to show you that, that you can do it. Right, so strong and emphasis. Right, so I'll do the same thing here. Notice how there's more tagging around uh, the, the style. What's wrong with doing it this way? Is there anything wrong with it that you can perceive that's uh, a little different? What would you do? That, what, what, how is this, how could this be, not wrong, but how could this be disadvantageous to do? Um, if you do it this way, as opposed to um, doing it another way, like the way I've, I've done here with first word, right? Why is why would this might be a little better or easier? Yeah. It might conflict a little bit. That's possible because remember they also come with other things. Strong and emphasis doesn't just come with a bold and, and italic. It also comes with other things, right? That come with our browser style. But how about this? What if I ever wanted to change that? Like I want, I don't want strong and emphasis. Just you know that you know on my browser style or the, the, the you know, this last word. I want to I want to change you know one thing or the other thing later on, right? I don't want to have emphasis on my on my last word, right? I want to have bold this or italics on my last word. It would I'd have to go through each one of those 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 the, the things that are tagged with an emphasis and take the emphasis away, like actually remove the tags, right? Or kill the style by going in there specifically targeting emphasis saying. Emphasis doesn't do anything in my in my context in my on my pages. I can do it that way too, but that's a real pain in the ass, and that's why I don't recommend you do something like this, right? Um, I'd rather you do something like this with a uh, with some kind of uh, class, which is more control, right? Or combine classes, do two classes, right, on a span. Okay, let's take a look at the effect of that. So I kind of use both. Now you notice there's it's bold and italics. Both things take hold, right? Just like we normally saw over here, right? I could also target uh, one of the two, right? So let's say, for example, I said, well, not, not only first word uh, is got some color, but you know, anything that's emphasized, right, uh, has got color. But I want, I want to have only things that have both emphasis and strong, right, that have color, right, a color of blue. How do I do that, right? And it's got to be, you have to do it in order. So here's how, here's how I want to talk to it. I want to say any, any tag... Right? I want to target any emphasis tag that has strong as its parent. Right? How do I target that as a selector? 
This is a compound selector that I'm making. Anyone know how to do that? Basic CSS, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about it. So I want to say I have a, an item that's strong, but also something that has an emphasis inside of it, right? And I want to target that with a color. Let's make another color. We'll use uh, uh, red, right? So a red color. So I want to say any, any strong element, any strong element that has an element that's emphasis inside of it, right? So actually, what I'm really saying is target the emphasis element with strong as its parent. All elements that have, um, you know, strong as, a, a, all elements that are emphasis elements that have strong as their parent. That's what I'm really saying here. Okay, so kind of a combined thing. Let's try it. We're going to try both ways, right? So let's do this. So I'm targeting you with red, and let's see if this is the right way to do it, right? So red, right? Well, let's go back and try it the other way around. So all, uh, what I'm saying here when I do the other way, if I say all emphasis uh, with strong. So I say all strong elements that are, uh, which I'm going to call with an emphasis parent, right? Let's see if that does it. You know, because if I go back here and I refresh, do I get the same code? No, because, because that's not true, right? I don't have that as a relationship, right? The relationship is not that my strong has emphasis as its parent, right? The relationship is the other way around. So that's why it's not targeting this, uh, this particular combination of, of tags. Clear? Right? It's all parent-child relationships. Right? And I want to, when I specify, I read it from, in this particular case, I want to read it from right to left, not left to right like we normally read it. So I start off with the rightmost tag that I'm targeting, strong. And I say, okay, does it have a parent of M? No? And this is wrong, this is the wrong way. I'm, this is the incorrect selector. I haven't, I haven't specified the selector correctly. Right? It has to be the other way around. It has to be M with a parent of strong. Oops, if I can spell it right. Okay. And this will be the red, the red element. So this here with two tags is the same as doing this with one span tag, right? Well, with different colors, right? Again, I don't want to rely on default browser styles. And typically what I do is I avoid strong and emphasis. I just avoid them. I don't use them at all. And the reason for that is because I want to specify my own styles. And unless I, unless I do specify styles for strong and M, like an example would be this. Let's say, for example, all of my strong tags, here's where I'm overwriting, right? So all my strong tags, right, um, they have, what does what strong mean? It means that it's a font weight, font weight of bold. That's what it means, right? Font weight of bold. But let's say all my strong tags, not only that they have a, front, a, font, a font weight of bold, but they also have a font uh, size, right, font size, of uh, 1.3 amps, so they're slightly they're slightly emphasized as well. They're, I'm going to override that stuff. Well, that's kind of it. Kind of plays havoc with uh, what's what are my other styles are doing, right? So let's just try this out. So strong, all my strong tags have that, and then I'm also specifying that any emphasis tag with a strong parent has red. Let's see how that works. And if I refresh, you can see now that it's much bigger than before, right? Much much bigger. But there's a problem here if I do it this way, right? The problem is I'm saying my default size for my body, right? My default size for my body is 1.1. And you know what? I'm saying that it's that this one is my font size is 1.3, which is almost like saying, you know what? It's like an H3 tag. So any any last word is or anything that's uh, that I that I deem as strong is like saying it's like around an, a one, uh, a, an H3 tag almost in terms of size, right? Which is pretty big. I can also go the other way around with uh, with the strong, right, and change my font size. Typically, when we specify strong, we specify other things. Like for example, sometimes we want to specify strong and put in a, another font family as well, or something else, right? Um, but typically, what I do is I leave it out, and I just use my I use my span tags uh, or specific uh, classes to to target uh, areas uh, more specifically. So let's get rid of all this, and I'm just going to get rid of it on the right here. And same thing with Beck down here. So I don't like doing this. This is not great practice, right? And I don't I don't recommend that you do it. Strong and M, but I, this is a good example of of a compound selector, right? I have I'm I'm trying to be more specific 
with my with how I'm talking about my selectors, I'm saying all emphasis tags that have strong as the parent. That's what I'm saying. I can go one step further, right, with these, and we'll talk about uh, pseudo selectors later on as we get more into CSS, right, more advanced CSS uh, with this, right. I can go deeper into the the way I can I can choose my selectors than just this. All right, so let's get rid of the strong tag altogether. And you know what? Um, I think this main needs a fix. We need to fix this main uh, element over here because it's got light gray, but my, my welcome peeks out from under it. And we're going to have to talk about this in a second. Hmm? Well, we'll talk about what border is. and what, it's, it's more of a padding thing, right? Because what happens is we have our container, right? Our container is the main, and underneath that um, we have our paragraph tags, right? And our H1 tags. But what's happening is there's we haven't specified a padding at all for inside of our container, and we'll talk about the differences in padding and margin, um, uh, you know, in a second. All right, so we kind of talked for a while. Let's take a short break, right? Because I've kind of talked about Visual Studio Code. Um, we talked about um, how to target stuff. I've done. I'm using a split screen here, which is kind of helpful for me when I do stuff. So you can see both the styles, and you can also look at HTML on one side and the other side. It's kind of a neat little tool. Um, when we come back, we're going to do more font styles, and then we'll get right into the, the box model, which is really what I want to I want to dig uh, dig into that to, uh, today. All right. So go ahead. Let's take ten and do that.